Welcome to the Stash and Notions podcast. My name is Penelope and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Miss Red Pen. It's Saturday the 6th of August 2016 and this is episode one. I'd like to start by thanking everyone who watched this Spendy Hall video with the subscriptions that I got and the positive comments that were sent to me. I felt compelled to start making a podcast. So here we are. Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to do this as it gives me an opportunity to bang on about my hobby with some kindred spirits across the ether. So a bit about me. I grew up in Tasmania, spent most of my adult life in Brisbane, but for the past three years I've been living in Victoria. I now live in an utterly adorable regional town called Bacchus Marsh. It's about halfway between Melbourne, which is the capital of Victoria, a state of Australia, and Ballarat, which is one of our major regional cities of Victoria. Uh, my day job, I commute to the city Monday to Friday, and that's pretty much where a fair chunk of my weekly knitting happens on the train. But I also try to spend a good half a day on the weekend knitting as well when I can. Um, and I also do a bit of spinning, but I'm a bit of a novice, you know, nothing to write home about. But I enjoy it and I am going to talk about it a bit in my whips section. But before I get to that, I thought that I'd better include a piece about my knitting history and how I got here and all that kind of thing. Um, it begins in a time of leg warmers and cocaine. That's right, it was the 1980s. While there was no cocaine in my life, there was a pretty hideous pair of Neapolitan leg warmers. They were chocolate white and pink, if my memory serves me. My mother originally taught me how to knit when I was just a wee lass. Um, I got the hang of the basic knit stitch and I could purl, but casting on and binding off were beyond me. Let's face it, if you can't start a project and you can't stop it, you're never really going to become a proper knitter unless you just want to knit the world's largest scarf. So I tried knitting again a couple of times in my 20s, mostly with horrible cheap acrylic yarns. I think um, the first scarf I actually finished myself was out of that horrible um, fluffy yarn that's still really popular in some circles but um, I think I might even have one hiding away in the back of the wardrobe somewhere as a reminder of my beginnings but like everything else back at that point I ended up giving it away when the next shiny adventure began. Knitting really became a major part of my life in around 2010. I suffered a major back injury two of the discs in my back popped and that left me with chronic pain and my former life as a gym junkie was over. Knitting gave me something to do other than sitting on the couch stuffing my face and feeling sorry for myself. Not long after this time I made friends with a hardcore knitter and she introduced me to both Ravelry and the Brisbane Stitch and Bitch group. And on reflection I think that both of these social aspects were what was lacking from my previous knitting life and I think are probably a good explanation why knitting has stuck around for so long this time. Six years on, here we are. I'm still knitting and I think it's fair to say it's my heart's home. Um, I have tried a bit of crocheting but um, ever since I discovered the joys of luxury fibre blends and indie dyes, um, there's nothing else I really want to do. My stash is now ridiculously oversized for the amount of knitting that I can achieve in a year, but I'm not going to let that stop me. I, I think collecting yarn might even be a hobby in and of itself. There are grand intentions to knit most of it, but with what I have at the moment, I think I've got about 10 years worth of knitting if I didn't buy another skein until then. So that's probably a good way of summing up me and my knitting and let's move on to the next segment. When a project comes along you must whip it. Um, I would bet I'm not the first person to have used that terrible terrible line but I'm not going to let that stop me. Works in progress. The first one I'd like to show you is the Waiting for Rain shawl by Soft Sweater Knits. 
Uh, I started knitting this quite a few months ago, February I think it was, as part of a knit along that Soft Sweater Knits was running. I put it aside when I took up knitting a cardigan that I did finish but now the time has come and I'm just knitting, knitting on this one at home so it is taking a little bit longer because I don't have that much time during the week to actually knit it. So here is my work in progress. Make sure I've got the right side up. Um, it's knit from the top down and it's got an unusual construction in that it has lace panels in short row repeats. Now this is something I think is brilliant because lace repeats can get a bit difficult at times um, and you've got sections of you know um, garter stitch repeat in between that makes up the bulk of the body. So it's coming along quite well and I'm really enjoying working on it now that I'm back into the swing of it. And the yarn that I'm using is by Gin and & Tonic and this is their 100% certified organic merino in the light fingering weight or three ply. Uh, and this is their nightshade colorway. It is showing up a little gray so I'll take a picture of it and drop it in um, as an insert into this section if I can figure out how to do that. Um, and Gin and Tonic is a local indie dyer from northern Victoria and I purchased this particular skein or two skeins of it at Spendigo, the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show that I mentioned in my previous video in 2014. So um, I've only got good things to say about working with this yarn. It's so soft and squishy and it does not split when you're knitting with it. And it's got quite a lot of um, airiness to it, I guess. Somebody can correct me on the technical terms for that, but it fluffs up quite a lot when you're working with it. So even though it's technically a three-ply, um, it's fluffing up into a four-ply kind of look. Um, I'm also working with 4.5 millimeter needles on this project. The pattern calls for, I think, fours or maybe 3.75s, but I a pretty tight knitter so I have to go up a needle size or two to get the right gauge for a project. The next work in progress that I'm going to show you, I didn't adjust my gauge and it really shows. It is the most popular pattern on Ravelry. It is called Hitchhiker and it is by Martina Bem and apologies Martina if I've mispronounced your name. The yarn that I'm using is wool mice and I cannot tell you what this colorway is. It was one of their We Different skeins. I bought it in a D stash and it, for some reason when they make a We Different, they put the We Different label over the colorway name. Um, again, I will try and pop in a picture of it photographed properly and maybe before I make another video, I'll learn how to get the lighting right. Um, to show you this better on screen. I have one spinning work in progress to show you. Uh, it's currently sitting on my wheel which is behind me in the corner there. The wheel is a little gem by Magicraft. I really like this wheel for two reasons. One is it's portable so it comes with its own little bag and I can pack it up if I want to go spinning anywhere. Um, and it's also double treadled now for people who aren't spinners double treadled means it's got two foot pedals so it sits in front of me and doesn't put that much pressure on my back and um, as a beginner who really needs to focus on what my hands are doing meaning that the feet are going together is one less thing to have to stress about when I'm trying to get you know the right amount of fiber moving into the wheel. Um, I've got a second braid of the yarn that I'm using here. Uh, this is a Yarn vs Zombies colorway. It is um, an Australian Superfine Merino and this colorway which is so gorgeous it is her Guardians of the Galaxy colorway and as you can see it's got all the different colors from many of the different characters and an insanely intense tealy aqua color that it's just amazing really so she's a, she was a great dyer and this was part of her year of the geek 
yeah, year, year of the Geek um, Club that ran, supposed to run for 2014, but it got stretched out into 2015 for a number of reasons that we don't need to go into here. But um, beautiful colorway, a dream to spin, and hopefully I'll have the first braid off the wheel to show you next time. All right, let's move on to the next segment. This next segment is acquisitions. You would think after the massive haul that I showed you from Bendigo last time that I wouldn't have anything new to show you, but you'd be wrong. Um, so let's get into it. There's not much, admittedly. The first thing I'd like to show you is some stitch markers that I bought on Etsy. What I was doing on Etsy at that point is a mystery to me. Um, and these just had to become mine. They are a adorable little set of stitch markers with the names of characters and places from Anne of Green Gables. It would probably come as no surprise to you that Anne of Green Gables was one of my favorite books from childhood. Cannot imagine why. Um, so yes, these ones have Anne and Gilbert and Shirley Blythe, or you could go Anne, Shirley and Gilbert Blythe, depending on how far into the series you got. And then there's Diana as her best friend and Avonlea. Um, so these are quite big stitch markers and they can probably almost moonlight as earrings. Being locking markers, I will probably use them to mark rows and things like that. Um, but yes, these were from um, the Etsy store called Two Cheeky Monkeys. So here's her little business card. I would recommend this seller because she was really communicative and got back to me super quickly and they came a lot faster than I expected them to. All right, the next and final acquisition, we are going to open it together because I just picked it up from the post office this morning. It is from um, Aussie Farm and Mints. And let's open the packet and see what we've got. Yeah, look, I'm going to edit it out, cutting this open. Here's the first one. So this is... A 100 gram skein of. It's noisy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, this first one is a gradient skein. Actually, they're both gradient skeins of um, colorway called Black Current. It is a. Oh, it's so nice to touch, I have to say. It's a four ply fingering weight, 55% superwash BFL, blue faced Lester, 45% uh, silk. Um, and there's about 400 meters there. And it does say to wash it separately because colours may run. So um, this will become a shawl, I think. It um, a top-down, centre-out, triangly kind of thing, I think, to make the best show of that delicious gradient. Um, all right, let's go for the next one. This one I'm a little bit excited about because um, I. We'll see why. <laughs> Oh, it's stunning. <laughs> right. Um, ah, I'm going to have to take it out of the packet too. All right, now that it's out of the packet, let's look at this one. It is called Ocean and it is blues and teals and stunningly gorgeous lace. And again, it is, um, it's got silk in it. Hooray. It's a two-ply two lace, 80% superwash merino, 20% silk. And there is 800 meters in that skein. Um, so, and this one just feels absolutely beautiful as well. Um, here we go. Here's an end. Look at how fine that is. So, yeah. Um, I have no idea what this one will become yet. Dare say it will be a scarf or shawl of some sort because they're my favorite things to make. But 
um, if you've got any recommendations for patterns that this would knit up fantastically into, please um, leave a comment for me below or hit me up on Ravelry. And that brings us to the end of the very first Stash and Notions podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know by liking, giving it a thumbs up, sharing it, comment below or hit me up on Ravelry with any feedback. I will post some show notes on the Stash and Notions blog. And again, thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to doing this with you again soon. Bye.